Okay, so, I decided that I kind of got sick of making scripted videos, and I've always kind of had trouble with motivating myself to finish them, so I decided to make a new kind of thing where I'm gonna rank every Billboard Hot 100 debut per month. I'm gonna start with February, and since the last Billboard week of March is almost here, I'm gonna do March pretty soon. I also plan on going backwards, so I'll do January of this year and subsequent months that are prior to now, and, um, yeah, the rules is, I'm basically just following Spectrum Pulse's, uh, rules, so if there's, like, a massive album bomb, and there's, like, ten songs, I'll probably only talk about, like, half of them or something, um, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna try to do here, so, for February 2021, we had 28 different debuts, and I'm gonna be ranking them from worst to best, in my opinion. So, at the bottom, at number 28, we have, uh, at number 28, we have Skin by Sabrina Carpenter, which was a shoe in for the bottom because this song is absolutely dreadful on every level. Um, imagine, uh, what's it called? Hot Girl Bummer by Black Bear because it has the same generally unpleasant attitude and ugly production as that song, except it's even worse because it plays to exactly zero of Sabrina Carpenter's strengths as an artist, and I've actually heard of her before the whole driver's license fake beef thing happened. Um, I knew her for a few songs that I liked, like Why in Paris, uh, and she has a pretty good voice, honestly, but this song makes her do this, like, Camila Cabello, like, bad girl aggressive shtick that just doesn't suit her at all. She sounds terrible doing this kind of thing. Um, and it's also because you kind of have to consider the fact that this song has no reason to exist. As Todd in the Shadows pointed out, I got dumped and I'm sad is something to write a song about. My boyfriend's weepy ex is annoying is not. Yeah, this basically has zero redeeming qualities, so yeah, that's why it's at the bottom. Okay, moving on is, um, Neighbors by Poo Shiesty, best rap name of all time, by the way, featuring Big 30, and also Apostapa by YBN Namir, featuring 21 Savage. Yeah, I decided to just go through with both of these at the same time, because they both have basically the same problem. They both suffer from what I like to call the shot of flow effect, just really basic, dull, uninteresting, and like, barely finished sounding piano lines with no support whatsoever, uh, that back these, like, aggressively one-dimensional hip-hop songs that, like, don't do anything interesting. They're just, like, a slog to get through. Uh, I put Apostapa in a one slot higher because I think 21 Savage's verse is better than, like, Pooh Shiesty's performance albeit not by much. Both of these songs basically suffer from the same thing. Also, Apostapa is shorter, considerably, so that makes it more bearable, but again, not by much. Okay, number 25, Fake Woke Tom McDonald. Uh, so the general consensus on the song is that his fans love it and everybody else seems to hate it, which, to be fair, is the consensus for 99% of this dude's songs. Uh, <laughs> so... The reason I don't have this at the bottom, like a lot of people probably would, is I do think there are some redeeming qualities here. For example, that grungy guitar lick on the verses I think sounds pretty decent. Um, it's definitely not the worst or even most ridiculous song Tom McDonald has put out. Uh, and, you know, the thing about these quote-unquote controversial or quote-unquote political, whatever you want to call it, songs, is that I don't think the content necessarily has to make or break the song, which may sound counterintuitive to the entire point, but uh, there are things such as the instrumental or the presentation of said message, no matter how much I disagree or agree with it, that can alter my opinion of it. So, like, for example, B.O.B. a couple of years back literally made a song about how he thinks the Earth is flat, and also had a couple other very questionable things in there, uh, but I actually think it's decent because of the weird, like, spacey, movie trailer-esque beat that backs it, and just the chaotic energy that he brings to that track. It makes it so that when I listen to it, I can, like, turn my brain off and just kind of enjoy it as this, like, movie trailer to a character study of a 
estranged person, I guess you could say. Uh, the problem is I can't do that with this song because it takes itself way too seriously. Um, especially on the chorus. Like, by the time the hook hits, all my respect for it goes out the window. Like, he uses the facts don't care about your feelings meme unironically to prove his point, which is just like the most self-defeating thing I I've ever witnessed in my life. It's just, it's way too long. Um, the grunginess gets tiring very quickly, and it's just really condescending, which is true for a lot of songs that are supposed to be political, controversial, whatever you want to call it, uh, and this is no exception. Alright, so moving on to number 24, Glad You Exist, Dan and Shay. This is basically like the opposite end of the spectrum from the last one. I remember next to nothing about this, I remember it being moderately pleasant, but I also think it's one of those songs that I hear it once and I immediately think, this is the kind of thing that I would be subjected to in like elementary or middle school uh, like, every morning, forever, and it would just become insufferable. So, I've only listened to this, you know, like, once or twice, so I don't... that hasn't really happened, but... especially because a lot of Dan and Shay songs suffer from this, uh, like, kind of blandness. It, it just doesn't resonate with me in any way, so that's why it's this low. Not terrible, just aggressively bland. Okay, 23, Antes, Annual A.A. Ozuna. I'll admit, I don't know that much about Latin music, but even from the limited scope I do have, it seems Ozuna and Annual A.A. just make really blaring, generic party music a lot of the time, and this is kind of what that is. It has, like, it has kind of, like, a decent bounce to it. Lyrics are generic. It's not bad, per se. It's just okay. Um, not very interesting. There's dozens of these... Latin songs that debut on the Hot 100 and have been ever since Despacito was a thing. So, yeah, not much to say. Moving on. Okay, Up by Cardi B. This one is... Okay, I don't really care about it that much. I mean, obviously, the main point of this song is for girls to twerk to on TikTok to with their friends. Like, that's pretty obvious to... Should be pretty obvious to anyone who listens to it. And, you know, I mean, that's fine. Uh, but usually when I hear a song like that, I judge it based off of how much it slaps because, you know, that's really the only metric to measure it by, I feel like. Uh, and this one just does not slap. WAP really shrunk on me because I feel like it was trying way too hard to be provocative. Like, with, like it's basically just like, how many different ways can we say pussy in one song? And that was pretty much that whole thing. But, you know, Up kind of has the opposite issue, where it's like, it doesn't go hard enough, I feel like. The hook is really repetitive. The production is okay. Um, it's not bad, again. Uh, I kind of like the lower sub bass thing that ha they got going on there, but yeah, it's mostly pretty unremarkable. I don't know. I've I've heard better from her. All right. Uh, time today, Moneybag Yo. One thing I'm starting to notice about Moneybag Yo is that that one song you did last year said some. That was I mean that was a good track. It had like a good guest verse. It had a good beat uh, and a good flow to match up with it. So it's overall a really solid song. Uh, however, I'm starting to notice that all of his songs are basically carbon copies of that song, which is, like, not a good thing to base your entire musical career on. The song's not that good, okay? Uh, this is literally just said some, but infinitely worse. The beat has the same tinny, glitzy, high-octave, like, trap production, and he does basically nothing with it. It's painfully derivative. I, I, yeah, I just rather listen to said some occasionally instead of this um okay number 20 bandito mike towers jun so unlike ozuna and annual aa i've never heard of these two before this is a bit better than that one because it has more personality and character it has more of a melodramatic feel even if it does have the generic uh latin percussion that so many of those songs have and also might be a nice guy anthem. I translated the lyrics into English, and I'm not really gonna hold that specific point against it because I don't understand Spanish, so it could just be a, a misinterpretation on my part. But um, overall, it's it's okay. Um, I like it a bit more than the last few just because I don't think it's derivative. I just think it's okay. Number 19, How They Remember You, Rascal Flats. When I saw Rascal Flats, like, 
debut on the Hot 100 in 2021, I thought, so wait, aren't those those guys that made a cover for the Cars movie? Like, why are we giving them another hit? Um, it's honestly a bit better than I expected. I kind of expected this to be in the same vein as the Dan and Shay song, just like painfully derivative country song. This one at least has some like organic sounding country instrumental, which makes their narrative of you know, like, the importance of legacy, uh, not as painfully cheesy as it could have been, so it's definitely bearable, it's not, you know, it's nothing special, obviously, um, but, you know, it, it's, it's fine, I, I don't mind it. Uh, okay, 18, no more parties, Coy Ray, Coy Ray, yeah. This one, I had a bit of a strange reaction, I didn't really know how to react to this one at first. Uh, Coy Ray is her voice is like really really high and at first it was kind of off-putting but you kind of get used to it the production is like very uh piano based minimalistic rod wave kind of deal um it's 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 fine okay 17 box of churches poo shiesty featuring 21 savage this one is a lot better than the other poo shiesty song because it's instrumental actually had effort put into it it sounds like my problem with this is that it sounds like half of a really good song but it's just missing more the that flute melody that it has going on on the chorus uh and just the production in general has a nice swing to it the melodic structure is engaging enough to keep me interested the problem is like i feel like the back end of the production is missing something and the performances are decent but you know it doesn't like, it just doesn't envelop me or captivate me enough. I feel like if you gave this to Metro Boomin, like, he could make it amazing. But as is, it's just okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 16, Heartbreak Anniversary, Givian. So, from what I've heard from Givian, he reminds me a lot of Sampha. He's an R&B singer that I respect a lot. He has a really good voice. He does the slow jam thing really well. Heartbreak Anniversary is still a little more upbeat than usual, actually, especially when compared to another song on this list that we'll be getting to later, and a that one song you did with Drake on uh, uh, Dark Lane demo tapes, which was one of the better songs in the album, definitely. Uh, this one is a lot more upbeat than that, It, but it still has a very sad, melodramatic tone. I mean, obviously, it's called Heartbreak Anniversary, so you kind of know exactly what it's about. But I, I like that it kind of has that balance of emotion going for it, and um, it sounds fine, it sounds pretty decent, you know, not great or anything, but I, I definitely respect this one. Okay, number 15, Give No Fucks, Polo G. Um, I like this one, uh, has that ominous piano line and sub bass going for it, kind of like what I feel like Box of Churches should have sounded more like. This one has a very present and ominous tone going for it, and Polo G is a really good MC when he's given a melodically competent beat, and he definitely was given one here, so yeah, I like this song. It's not exceptional by any means, not his best, but I do like it. Alright, uh, 14 Lifestyle, Jason Derulo and Adam Levine. I literally listened to this song one time and I immediately was like, this is going to be an atom bomb on TikTok. It is like tailor-made to absolutely explode on that app because it's like bombastic and bouncy and jubilant, but it also has like the trap instrumental behind it and Jason Derulo going over a trap beat. Like it's exactly the kind of thing that TikTok would make a dance out of. Um, despite that, I like this song a fair bit. It's over the top and ridiculous, but that definitely plays to the strengths of both Jason Derulo and Adam Levine. Um, so, yeah, the performances click a lot, especially because, like I said, they both go over the top, so they have a couple of, like, vocal flares that are pretty noticeable throughout the track. Like, you can tell that they're not just doing the bare minimum, like, they're putting effort extra effort into their vocal performances, and that definitely helps on a song like this. Uh, so, definitely pretty good, I would say. Okay, 13, Love Story, Taylor's version, Taylor Swift. 
I don't know why. This one, I think it's, I like this one slightly better than the original. Probably just because of the, like, acoustic, warm acoustic sound uh, and aesthetic it has. Yeah, I mean, it's one of her earlier country hits. It was always pretty decent, this one. There's a nice little update to that. Uh, and yeah, not really much to say about it. It's it's a decent song, and it has that nice little uh, instrumental like flourish on uh, that replaces the bridge. I like how it sounds. Nice song. Okay, number twelve. What it feels like. Nipsey Hussle and Jay Z. I like this one a fair bit. Uh, it definitely feels like a more watered down version of Diamonds Are Forever, but that's not a huge insult because that song is one of the best on late registration, so I can totally work with that. Both of them have Jay-Z on them, both of them have lyrics describing, um, like, the climb out of poverty and exploring and managing riches. I mean, Jay-Z is based a very large part of his career on quote-unquote keeping it real, especially ever since 444. And that does kind of feel tiring on this song like it does on a lot. I mean, I liked it on, for example, the story of OJ because it tied well into the theme of that song. But here, it, it just, it doesn't click quite as well. Uh, still a few pretty decent bars about it. Uh, Nipsey Hussle is great as always. So yeah, it's still overall good. Kanye Crazy, Lil Durk. Kicking off our top 10, Gravity by Brent Fayez and DJ Dahi featuring Tyler the Creator. Uh, when I saw Tyler the Creator was collabing with Brent Fayez and that was debuting on the Hot 100, I was really hype. This one didn't quite live up to the expectations, but I do still like it a lot. The hook on this one is really solid. Tyler's verse is good, um, as per usual. The instrumental is really... Uh, infectious, groovy, bouncy, what you would expect from something like this. It's like kind of Thundercat-esque, although not quite as good as Thundercat, but you know. Um, I do have a few problems with it though. Uh, for one thing, there's an air horn on the chorus for no reason, and it sounds hilarious. But it's just like buried in the back of the mix, and I think they're just like shoving it in there for no reason. Uh, it's funny, but it does detract from the vibe of the song. Um, and also, there's a weird lyrical disconnect like it, it's about this like bitter breakup analysis which does not mesh well with a chill vibe that it has i mean there you can make an ironic juxtaposition between instrumental and lyrics on songs and make it work for example um super lonely that hit song benet had last year was supposed to be super depressing and yet bubbly and upbeat and that thing kind of worked because it was supposed to reflect the narcissism of gen z and it did that really well uh but this song doesn't really have that excuse it's still very good just because it sounds really good but there are a few um things that block it from being higher okay number nine should have ducked lil dirk featuring Pooh shiesty that's still a great name um this one is just really solid all around. I like the ominous gospel uh, vibe it has going for it. Um, it's The lyrics are pretty standard uh, gun fair, you know. It's kind of like that Polo G song from earlier, but I think this executes that um, kind of song a lot better here. It just feels darker, more tonally consistent. Um, yeah, I really like this one. Okay, uh, number eight, calling my phone, Lil TJ featuring Six Black. This one, I was, I got pretty much exactly what I expected. Um, it has a like a nightcore, slow nightcore Bryson Tiller kind of vibe going on here. Uh, Lil TJ's performance is not as whiny as it could have been. I mean, his voice is still very high-pitched, but it does work to this song's benefit, I would argue. Number seven, We're Good, Dua Lipa. So, Dua Lipa is basically a pop music goddess. Uh, the entire music industry, uh, whether it comes to 
uh, financial success or critical acclaim on both the big or small scale are huge simps for Dua Lipa, and I include myself in that, obviously. Uh, we Are Good is just a good song, though, which may sound like a weird complaint, but we're talking about Dua Lipa here, who, even if you ignore the deep cuts and just look at the hits, they're all fantastic, and they blow this out of the water. I don't know why this was chosen as, uh, why this was chosen to be pushed as a single, but, you know, whatever. It's still really good, but, like, it, it doesn't have that Dua Lipa trademark on it, you know? Like, this sounds like an Ava Max song. It doesn't belong to Dua Lipa the same way most of her other music does. It kind of reminds me of So Am I by Ava Max, actually, a lot. Uh, you know, it's it's it has a similar melodic structure, especially on the hook. It has the lyrical sentiment. It shares the lyrical sentiment of... I guess, moving on from, like, a bad ex or a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they just have very similar vibes. But, overall, I mean, this one is still a very good song. I mean, it is still Dua Lipa, but uh, she can obviously do a lot better. Speaking of Ava Max, uh, My Head and My Heart, Ava Max. Contrastly with what I said about Dua Lipa, this might just be my favorite Ava Max song that I've heard thus far, because, like, usually she goes for early 2010s pop nostalgia, but this song is actually early 2000s nostalgia because it literally samples uh, that one song from... Uh, okay, so I looked it up. It's All Around the World by Touch of Class. It came out in 2000. So yeah, this is really early 2000s nostalgia. Um, I, the reason I couldn't really put it any higher is because it borders on plagiarism almost. There was another song that got big in the UK last year, My Head and My Heart, that sampled the same song but had a much different melody, although it didn't sound nearly as good as this. This is basically just a really good-sounding remastering of that song, so I still put it pretty high. I do like listening to this a lot. I think Ava Max sounds great. Some might argue that she oversings on the chorus, but I think it really helps enhance the early 2000s dance pop energy that uh, is a focal point of the song. It, um, I really like the melody a lot, but again, obviously it was sampled, but still, like, it, it just sounds really good. Okay, top five. Astronaut in the Ocean by Masked Wolf. I've literally never heard of Masked Wolf before, and this was a huge pleasant surprise. I love this song. It's great. It's all around great. I don't really have that many complaints. Um, the beat sounds dark and spacey, but not in the typical way that a lot of uh, trap and rap music sounds nowadays. It sounds pretty unique. I can't really compare it to anything. Uh, the closest comparison I can make is it kind of sounds vaguely like Aesop Rock if you really, really squint at it. And I, yeah, I love the way the beat sounds. I love how it uh, swirls in and out. And I think the MC on this did a great job as well. He especially on the verses, like, he has, like, four different flows. The flow switch-ups are seamless. None of it feels forced. It's just a very smooth ride from start to finish, and it's only two and a half minutes long, which is great. If this was any longer, like, even a minute longer, I would not like it nearly as much. The chorus verse chorus and that's it um, structure was definitely the right way to go with this. It's short, sweet, and very effective. Um, and I checked out his discography out of curiosity, and this is not a fluke. He has a lot of good songs. Uh, Night Drive would top this list if it was the single instead, but this seemed to come out of nowhere. I don't even know if this blew up on TikTok. It sounds like it could have been homegrown, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, yeah. Great song. Okay, number four. Laval Vidar, Billie Eilish, and Rosalia. So, I mean, I love both of these people, so I had pretty high expectations going in, and those expectations were met. Rosalia is super experimental. She's known, she's been known to, like, push, actively push the genre forward, at least stateside, in a way that very few artists can hope to match. And Billie Eilish has pretty much mastered the art of minimalism and using minimalism to convey the emotion of longing or loneliness or missing something. And that is very apparent on this song right here. I mean, 
and she's like barely older than me and she's already mastered this tone and she uses it in this song to match Rosalia's style pretty effortlessly. They both do a great job on this. If I'd had one nitpick, they don't really have that much chemistry. Their voices do kind of blend together, but that's not really necessary to make this song work. That's not really the main focal point of this, I feel like. So I, yeah, great song. Okay, top three. Quicksand, Moray, I've never heard of this guy before, but this song blew me away. The instrumental was great the first time and remained great the more times I listened to it. It kind of reminds me of Yosemite by Travis Scott on Astroworld, and that's only a good thing. That was one of the best songs on that album, in my opinion. Uh, but I would argue this one's even better because the liquid guitar... I mean, the liquid guitar just sounds better on its own, but the performance and the lyrics about living in the projects, which is not a new topic, but the way... Not just the amount of details that Murray gives, but the rhyme scheme and just the way it's worded just matches this song so well. Like, it just... He conveys everything that he's trying to convey in this song very effectively. It's it's a really solid track. Okay, number two, Finesse Out the Gangway, Lil Dirk, and Lil Baby. I was not expecting to like this this much. This is by far the best thing I've ever heard from Lil Dirk, and... Lil Baby, it's one of the best things I've heard from him, too. I would even go as far as to say that this is better than The Bigger Picture, because as much as I do like The Bigger Picture, and as much as it is culturally important, I guess you could say, Vanessa Out the Gangway basically takes that song, upgrades it, and perfects it. It's, um, knows how to use a piano beat the right way, unlike those songs near the bottom of this list. The piano beat is hyper complex extremely locomotive it feels extremely captivating the entire time every decision on this feels extremely captivating like the auto tune on their voices uh that like you barely even recognize it's there but it enhances them so much uh it's just I, it really is just a banger and little baby does verse is great because it's like a perfect fit for this kind of song it's um and again, the lyrics kind of like with Quicksand have a relatively similar topic, but the way it's conveyed in the song just makes them all the better. So number two for that one. Uh, and then at number one, I have Like I Want You by Givian. Like I said, Givian is a very talented guy. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this song is amazing. It's he does the smooth R&B slow jam very well, and much like that uh, Rosalia song, it conveys the feeling of heartbreak and longing with its slow tempo, and it kind of like, it kind of reminds me stylistically of her or even Daniel Caesar, but it's not nearly as glowing or optimistic as those. This is, this is a much more... Uh, heartbroken R&B song and Giveon it makes it amazing. It's just a really good R&B slow jam that I don't have anything to complain about and I would say it's the best song here, except that's a lie because the best song is actually Chug Jug With You by Leviathan, which I added just to make things more interesting. Um, so, fun fact, this is objectively the best song ever made. This is a gift amongst humanity. Uh, the American Boy instrumental is obviously amazing. It's one of the best uh, beats Kanye made in the 2000s, honestly. Uh, and, you know, the performance on this is... Beyond words, you see, the way he says, number one victory 